Turn better every day. We just showed we could do any damn thing we want to do. The Saints and Chiefs this Sunday just got a lot more interesting. Drew Brees is back and will be starting for New Orleans. He's missed the last four games with 11 broken ribs and a punctured lung. However, team doctors believe he's fully healthy, clearing him to play. The final hurdle was passing the eye test for Sean Payton. He's looked good. Uh, he feels good. And uh, we were encouraged at the start of the week. You know, we wanted to see how, how it felt. You know, as he as he went through a, a, a full practice week, and um, he's done a good job. We wouldn't be playing him if 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 he wasn't healthy and right. and able to function and feeling good and recovered. The Saints are looking to clinch the NFC South with a win. Having Drew Brees back should provide a massive boost. New Orleans is one of five teams in the NFL averaging 30 points per game prior to his injury. They had the fourth highest offensive efficiency in the league at that point. Now, the change at QB definitely throwing a curveball at KC. Diana Rossini is more. Well, it feels like the entire world was surprised by the news that Drew Brees will get the start on Sunday, including the Kansas City Chiefs, who told me they were preparing all week long for Taysom Hill to get the start. The Saints made the decision on Monday after Brees went through a workout with trainers on the field. They said he looked awesome. They had a good conversation and they made the decision that he's going to start this game. And every day he was improving. He was taking first team reps. And the important part of all this was how he felt the next day after the workouts. And I was told he felt really good. Now a source did tell me that he's not exactly 100%, but they feel confident that this is the right decision as we know that the Saints want to lock up home field advantage come the playoffs. Now with the good comes the bad for New Orleans. Michael Thomas has been ruled out for the game. He hasn't practiced all week dealing with a nagging ankle injury. So it's another week that we won't get to see Breeze and Thomas in that combination, which was the most dynamic one-two punch last season. And on the other side, but now they're seven and seven with that three point loss. Let's get some live reaction right now from there in Vegas. Oh, OK, we'll get back to some live reaction from Vegas in a moment. Right now, though, Nabil, uh, I know somebody's standing by with something to say. Damian Woody and his audio is always great, right, Damian? <laughs> we got you, right? That's right. Uh, there we go. All right. That's perfect. There we go. <laughs> Double check. Uh, yeah, we're one for two. Uh, Damien, we got to start here with the Raiders because, I mean, mathematically not eliminated, but let's be honest, they're done, right? What changes do these, uh, does this team need to make moving forward to become a legit playoff team? Because, honestly, this is really disappointing for Vegas. Well, for, listen, first of all, I have to say that Derek Carr is going to be the, the quarterback. Remember, there were some questions coming into this season with this move to Las Vegas whether Derek Carr was going to be the guy long term. I think Derek Carr has proved that this year. He's really had a good year. But everything, when you look at the Raiders, everything's on the defensive side of the football. That's where all the, the changes need to make. Obviously, they, they've changed. Uh, they fired defensive coordinator Paul Gunther and they installed Rod Marinelli as the interim coach. But, you know, this is a team that, can't, that hasn't been able to stop the run all, all year long. Now, they made a concerted effort to stop the run tonight. But that just left left wide open holes in the secondary um, in this Raiders defense. So they have a lot of work. They need to get the right coordinator and get more personnel that can get after the quarterback on that Raiders defense. On the flip side, what about Justin Herbert? We talk about him week after week. This kid is a stud. What did you see out of him tonight? Justin Herbert is a dog. He's an absolute dog. He, this, this guy right here, it's just, you wouldn't even believe that this guy's a rookie, probably the, the rookie, offensive rookie of the year. Uh, listen, whether you're talking about rolling out, getting out of the pocket, touch on deep balls, he had it on full display tonight. Arm talent is just off the charts. This guy is an absolute winner, and I know the record doesn't necessarily reflect it, but he is definitely playing beyond his years, and, and this and this uh, Los Angeles Chargers team, they're in great shape with, with Justin Herbert at the helm of the quarterback position. I know you talked about Marcus Mariota before you go. I got to ask you about him. What does his performance do for his future? Listen, I was very impressed with Marcus Mariota, and got to give credit to John Gruden as well uh, for for being able to change up the play calling to adapt to the the style of quarterback 
that Marcus Mariota brings to the table. Listen, when you're a backup, you don't get reps during the week. So to come in and, to come in and play, you know, in, a, after that Derek Carr injury, Marcus Mariota played a heck of a football game. You know, he used his legs a lot, got out of the pocket, some design runs, made some really nice throws, um, intermediate and deep balls. So I think he really helped his chances moving forward uh, as this season progresses. All right, thank you, Damian. Appreciate that. Let's go to uh, John Gruden live now. Sports Center, Nabil and Michael with you. The Thursday nighter is done between the Chargers and the Raiders. And for the Raiders, it was simple. <laughs> Non-negotiable. They yeah. had to win this one. FBI giving them just a 20% chance to make the playoffs going into this contest. Yeah, because coming in, you had three games remaining in the season. They were a game back in the wild card race, so they had no time to be wasting time because they were behind the seven-seed Dolphins, the eight-seed Ravens at seven and six. They had to make something happen against the Chargers. So let's go to Vegas. John Gruden sporting the Oakland Raiders have to start the game. Now, was it a mistake? Was it nostalgia? Was he looking for some good luck? Either way, yeah, organization wasn't down with it. He would have to switch hats. Uh, Justin Herbert, Hunter Henry. Herbert went six for six on that 75-yard touchdown drive to start the game. Chargers lead it seven zip. Now Gruden, now, he's, he's suited and booted now. He's Vegas. He's ready to go. Uh, Derek Carr, rolling out, can't find anyone, and then watch that. Oh, that's not a good sign. We've seen it so many times in sports. Pulls up, he would not return. So that means Marcus Mariota comes in for the Raiders with Vegas down 7-3. to three. And he came in a game like he was the starter. How about that dime to Waller for the 35-yard touchdown? Now, granted, at this point, we got a battle of former Oregon QBs, and Mariota's like, yo, let's remember who won the Heisman. But Herbert having a tremendous rookie campaign for the Chargers. Downfield, K.J. Hill Jr., big game there just before the half, 25 yards. And the very next play, Johnson. In the end zone, 26 passing touchdowns of the season for Herbert. That's one off the rookie record. Chargers lead at 17-10 at the break. Let's go to the third quarter. Mariota looking for Waller again. Finds him. Gain of 25 yards there. Raiders moving it down the field. First and goal for Josh Jacobs. Over the top, touchdown. We've got a tie game at 17 all. But the next Chargers drive, Herbert to Mike Williams. That gets a first down thanks to 14 yards on the completion. Same drive, now it's third and nine inside the 20. Herbert incomplete, but yeah, we see flags. Defensive pass interference on Mullen. Ball goes to the one, and from there, Chargers punch it in. So L.A. regains the lead. 24-17. How would the Raiders respond? Again, they need this game if they have to make the playoffs. Completion there. Nelson Aguilar moving the chains. It's fourth and one now. Instead of kicking the field goal, John Gruden goes for it. And check out this play by Mariota. Avoids the rush. Nice little dump off there for the first down. We're still going. Third and goal now. Mariota up, up and away. Cool thing about this game for Mariota, if he took 60% of the snaps based on the way his contract is set up, it could get him an extra million dollars. They thought they had the game in hand, but somehow an interception? Are you serious? Chris Harris Jr. off the tip ball, returned at 52 yards. Good thing Mariota was there to make the tackle. So Chargers have another chance to regain the lead. Oh, Herbert, you can't take that sack. Loss of eight yards. So that field goal for Michael Badgley ends up being a 51-yard attempt with less than a minute to go. And it is wide left. His second miss of the night. So what would happen? Well, the Raiders would get the chance. They're going to try it from 60, 65 yards away, but didn't even have a chance because the snap was not on par, and so now we head to overtime. In the OT, Raiders get the ball to start the extra frame. Second and three here for Mariota, calls his own number. 
13 yard gain for the first down. So now it's first and 10 inside Chargers territory. Mariota looking deep. And oh, two Chargers had a chance to pick that one off. Rayshon Jenkins, Casey Hayward, and Hayward can't believe one of them didn't catch it. So, what would Mariota do with a second chance? Uh, he would do this. 